Happy writing Sunday. Happy voice and verse day, everybody. We're going to start off with the pros category, 15 to 18. So first we have our honorable mention, which was Illusions by Olivia. The scary twist at the end is amazing. I really liked how the main characters and Jason's relationship is truly one of love, but there's a struggle. It really helped show how her condition affected her. I also loved how the ending leaves her eyes up for interpretation. Our third place piece was Marawa Juma with Innovation Does Not Begin Until We Start Within Ourselves. This is an amazing commentary on technology. The use of an image is unique and makes this stand out. The first line is very thought provoking and so is the last line. I never noticed many of the points that were made as well, like how we overfocus on evolving entertainment and how little important technology has changed over time. This teaches people about the issues on the development of technology and is very scholarly. So our second place piece was entitled Nothing by Sarah Pear. Even though it's a short story, there is so much world building. I love everything we get about the war and the planet itself. The story also has some reflections of actual wars, which is very interesting. There are also many emotions in the story that are not outright written. The ending line is very beautifully written and wraps up the story. And for our first place, we have To Be or Not To Be by Aja. The progression of the relationship between Dania and her mother was wonderfully written as the way of the rest of the family comes together to defend Dania. The story makes no excuses for the way Dania's mother treats her while also allowing the compliment she gives her at the end to hold great emotional weight. I love how the theme of family progresses and changes as you keep reading. We learn so much about her family and her culture from the story. It is not directly said where she's from and talks about her culture in a way that teaches us all well. It's very nice how everything works out in the end for Dania. It really shows how much love the family has for each other. It is a truly beautiful done story. And no matter what, we will always have family by us. Congratulations um, on winning first place also. Thank you. Thank you. All right. There was a strange stillness to Jenna's house that Dania couldn't quite get used to. Of course, there were Jenna's roommates always moving and talking, but they weren't the source of the silence. It was something else, something quieter. Say, Jenna, she said, trying to keep up with her sister's large strides. You must get a lot of good sleep here, don't you? Her suitcase hummed behind her. Jenna stopped then, looking at Dania before shifting her eyes to the kitchen. There was a look in her eyes that Dania couldn't quite make up. Well, since I left home, I have been getting much better sleep. She walked into the kitchen as she spoke, Dania at her heels. Jenna's kitchen was everything their parents' kitchen wasn't. Big, heat trapping, and old-fashioned were the words that came to mind about her parents' kitchen. It was the only place Dania didn't want to be in. Jenna's kitchen was quite the opposite, with hers being moderately sized and bright colored. The breeze from the windows gave the kitchen a cooling effect. The unadulterated laughter was another factor in Jenna's favor. Jenna's roommate turned then, catching Dania's eye. She pulled something out of the fridge, heading towards Dania. You're Dania, right? I'm Sarah, and I think you'll like this lemonade I made today. All Dania could do was stare at Sarah. She took the drink, thanking her before before leaning on the counter. She said bismillah before she drank, enjoying the sweet tanginess of it. There was something comforting about all of it, something comforting about the thought that Jana's kitchen would never be like the one back at home. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming and sharing, and congratulations on winning first place with this wonderful piece. Thank you for submitting to the contest. With that, we can move on to our next category, which was poetry 15 to 18. So first, our honorable mention, we have Why Do We Stay by Sophia Curtis. This piece is absolutely heartbreaking and really depicts the fear and pain that can go into seeing a family member suffer. It's especially intensified when the narrator's abuelo is introduced near the end of the poem. The writer does an amazing job setting up a conflict, depicting emotions, and characterizing their family members. So next, we have an eclectic collection of works of varyingly pretentious mannerisms uh, slash accolade of suffrage by Toby. I love the content 
that tackle several forms of media at once. And while it can be a challenge, I think this piece was able to feel like a poem and a several act play. The various conflicts and human experiences are beautifully illustrated and the stylization, such as grammar and capitalization choices managed to be unique in this story. This author did a great job appealing to emotions using descriptive language and setting themselves in different situations. We can go to our second place, which was Crucifixion by Wisney. I really admire how this poem manages to capture the many viewpoints of a conflict. The war they're describing is considered holy. People are trying to justify it. History is continuously repeating itself and so on. It does a great job of tackling all of these issues and feels reminiscent of current events as well. Uh, crucifixion. We write love letters to martyrs who did not know their own names. We pay for peace with the wars inside our bodies. The dips of our collarbones hold the tongues of our people that have been sent away in the wind or on a boat or into the sky. We are the very contradiction of a holy war for what can be holy about a war. The martyrs tell us everything is beautiful because we are doomed. We spit back everything is beautiful because it is alive. But for the dead, they cry, the dying, the destined to be lost, I have no patience left. I feel like a martyr who knows death is approaching. I can do nothing to stop the talents from sinking in. The martyrs before me tell me to run, as the martyrs before them tell them to run. Quick, before the people with pitchforks arrive. It was not death coming. It was not death we hurried away from. It was the people with pitchforks willing to sacrifice us for a story, a plot line, a reason to say that their wars were justified. The dips in our collarbones are not deep enough to hold the language of suffering. It is now etched into the fabric of our skin, read only by those who share the same fate as we do. But by then it is too late. The fire has started. The dead are rising. The pitchfork procession has begun. Thank you so much for sharing. Congratulations on your poem and winning second place. And thank you for submitting to the contest. This was an incredible piece. Thank you. So next we have our first place winner in the poetry 15 to 18 category, which is entitled Dell by Jovi Aviles. The rhythm of all of these poems is phenomenally utilized. The space between the sentences of girls twice seen and once removed particularly encapsulates the distance between the self-perception of girls and women as they see themselves and people's perceptions of girls and women as those at outside of them, yet ironically removing them from their own bodies. Dell uses beautiful language to capture snapshot of a woman's experience. I absolutely love the way the author makes comparisons and uses them as seamless transitions from one occurrence to another. The poem also creates a sound structure beginning on womanhood within oneself and ending on how it's viewed by someone else. There's a little backstory behind this one. So I actually... On Christmas, I wrote my gra grandma a poem because she loves my writing, and I kind of matched it with this. It also has like the same title, and so I wrote about her and like how I view her as a, a woman. And then I also wrote this about how like what being a teenage uh, girl is like, and what womanhood means to me. So I'll read it now. I'll show you what it means to be a woman of means, scraping the bloodied inside of my cheeks raw, wanting to pet every monster that erupts from the cracked leather of your jeans, flipping through the mangled pages of a misfit magazine that slices through my flaky skin, pale and raw like the sweetly sugared dough we slide through broken dishes and wo wooden cutlery. We walk on water, slabbed into wooden pl planks, and creaked across stages, lit up like the Casper silhouettes that we fold into. The flaps of our ears made to bend to the succumbing numbness from the teeth scraped shouts of the virulent males that seep and glare through our bodies made of glass, clear and disordered, as are their minds made up from molten, melted perceptions of girls twice seen and once removed. Thank you so much, Jovi. That was an incredible piece. And congratulations on uh, winning first place. This was incredible. So thank you. We are moving on to our pros 12 to 14 category. Our first honorable mention, Marlene Campos Benitez with Things I Wish I Could Say. This was adorable to read. Many kids struggle with verbalizing their emotions, and it's a wonderful idea to write out these thoughts when you feel trapped into staying silent. 
It's also very relatable. Words are very hard to say. It's beautiful that you were able to write it. Third place, Life by Daniela Flores. I love the abstractness of this piece, and I think writing is a great tool for you to motivate others or even yourself. This piece made me think of my own experiences while reading. I strongly related to what you were saying and the way you articulated that you are the one living your life. Our second place, The Sun by Oliver Tiro. This piece made me so interested in this character and their dog. There's so many possibilities and it truly made me think. I would have liked to see a bit more world building. However, the ending sentence is amazing. Very good. All right, we'll move on to our first place, which is Moon by Manuela Russo. The last four lines of the prose are particularly touching. Even though the subject touches upon feelings of inadequacy, those sentences read as a sort of reminder. Some people wait for the sun to come up, but others wait for the moon. This piece was genuinely very beautiful in terms of vocabulary, and I thought it was very mature. All right, so we can move on to our poetry 12 to 14 category. First honorable mention was Snow Days, The New Way by Angelina de Bruhin. I love how much detail the writer put into describing every part of this wonderful snow day. The plot twist at the end was perfectly relatable and I didn't see it coming as I was lost in the environment the writer created. Our third place piece, What It Is to Breathe by Ava Santos. I loved how the waves symbolized the freeing highs and restricting lows of life. I love the feeling of tension and release that this author created in their piece. For our second place piece, A Blaze Into Flames by Valeria and Lopez Loomis, this piece was very moving and emotionally riveting with all its references to fire. The ending line was perfect, encapsulating the theme of the poem in one final punch. If I could choose what I was born as, I would choose fire so that I could give your heart a flame to ignite for. I would cover the sun if it ever harms you. I stayed as long as the moon did for the sun and will stay for as long as the sun did for the moon. I make sure that the fire that burns my heart's rage blends with the fire that ignites your eyes. I see those eyes looking for a flower to blossom for. I want to feel a burning caress and feeling and the feeling of your heart and my heart igniting into ashes. I want to sculpt you like one of the sculptures you only see in museums. Your face will be the number one view. Don't put it out, not yet. Don't bring the pain that is yet to embrace both of us. Our hearts found each other at another time, this time with the hope of a second chance, with a different ending. I want to burn as bright as the sun with you. We started because we had a hope for an ending. I want to be every star in the universe. I was so lucky to see of you as beloved as you. I could watch the sunset for hours if it were to be as close as yours, and light in my heart in a way no flame ever has. Let your heart burn with flames and I'll make sure to keep it burning. I'll make sure that light radiates against your radiant sight. I to touch every skin and breathe my fingers with fire so let my body burn if it means I get to be with my star. Thank you. I cannot believe you are 12 years old. This piece was amazing. And when I read it, I didn't know how old you were. So I was assuming like on the older side. But the fact that you're so young and writing this definitely, you know, continue on your writing path because I really loved this. This was such a great piece. And thank you so much for submitting it to the contest and coming here to read it today. Our first place was Freedom by Michelle Zhang. This piece turned freedom into something physical with all its in-depth analogies. I loved how well thought out and provoking this poem was. This piece was is profoundly moving, portraying freedom as not just an ideological con- construct to praise, but as an outcome that must be fought for by human beings. Yeah, I was. Uh, I just want to say that I was inspired to write this because throughout my life, I've always seen these cases where there's a lot more to see than the mask people can wear. Yeah. Um, freedom. Freedom is not quick and easy, but a dreaded choice. You can stall and stumble and even fall, but the choice will never waver. Freedom can elude the rich, the poor, the kind, the cruel, the young, the old. I've grown sick of go with the flow as the dead fish do. Freedom is not a crown, it is a scar and it comes with a price. If a pig eludes slaughter, who's to say a wolf wouldn't change that? Freedom is a sinister queen, prided in one too many her most royal majesties. Stories describe her greatness, a face-to-face meeting could not be more different. 
Thank you so much, Michelle, and congratulations on winning first place in this category. Again, I was surprised you were 12 because this piece was so mature, so advanced, but thank you for submitting. Thank you for coming here to read it today and congratulations. We're so grateful to everybody for showing up today, for being here and listening to these incredible pieces. And especially Alex, thank you for being such a wonderful host. Yeah, snaps to Alex. <laughs> thank you. Thank so you. Glad. Thank you. And just another thank you to everybody here. We do this contest every year. So I hope that you can submit again next year and we'll see you again in the next one. Really loved all the pieces, loved listening to them being read and just really celebrating all of the wonderful words that you've created.